When I was invited to make a project at Prada Ronza, it was really uh, uh, something that I was very interested to, to, to do as a part of my history of cultural practice. Um, so uh, we wanted to make a project that had this human scale component and how to bring back a notion of life and not trying to mimic mimic uh, an institutional or an art gallery within this house because it was inhabited in the past it has been beautifully restored by Prada and make it a kind of a historical uh, beautiful houses from the 1930s here built by a German architect and they make it uh, visited so they bring this po the possibility to people to come in and visit how a house was at the time at a time where East and West were dialoguing. Mm. It was a French concession built by a German architect and where a, a, a Chinese family was living in and uh, having uh, some, uh, some uh, normal life here and inviting people in the ballroom ne next door almost. So there were really a life here where we were easily dialoguing without any differences. Mm. And I think the time now is close to the same as well, where we are able to dialogue. We are opening today where the Pompidou Center just opened mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah. Who would have thought about that 10, yeah. 20 years ago? So we are reaching a very interesting time where we are again able to dialogue, where we look at you and come here and you come to us as well and making things in our world. So I think we are back to a real dialogue. And this house is for me this, this, um, this platform of this dialogue between the East and the West in a natural and in a very human scale. And the artist and I were very interested to invent a project as a story, as a film somehow where you could start from the beginning with this uh, this rare window, neon light, that reconnects somehow the house to the city, reconnects the past to the present, and give the feel from what you will experience throughout the building. So kind of a generic of the entire story. And from the, this facade as well, you can f see some differences. There is a window that has a, a, a green film, so it shows something different, more contemporary. And the ground floor, you enter through another filter, a pink filter, to enter inside. And then you see on another floor different photos of houses built in mid-80s or 90s in the suburb of Hanjo, mm -hmm. where people, mm -hmm. when they get the, the money, could build their own houses. And those houses have very specific architecture that are kind of hybrid architecture. And the specificity of it that we had in China at the time, it's most of the facade or windows were either blue filter or green filter. It was kind of a sign of modernity, contemporary mm. building. And now we are at a phase where this is looking very old for China. Time goes very fast here. Mm. So this close past look very fast as an old, almost prehistoric part of the contemporary life of China. So the artist has been taking those photos of those houses that are, for most of them, disappearing now for new big building made by architects. So we are living, it's showing this kind of fast mutation of China. This is why this artist was for me one of the most interesting artist of the third generation of Chinese contemporary art to be working here because he's really uh, recording the change mm. of urban scale and how through a window, because the window is really part of his vocabulary, the window is not just a romantic part of the past because he's using old frame window from the French concession, buildings have been demolished, he take over this, this, those frames but not to show the past with a tear in the eyes, but to show the transformation mm. of the city where landmark 
architectural building of Shanghai, for example, have been becoming cultural landmark places. So this is, for me, again, coming here with him was very relevant. Relevant because of his work, relevant of how we could together build a scenario where from room to room you could live different kind of experiences and create a platform where people would be taking a kind of uh, immersive, human scale, not technological, but normal life. For example, you hear, once you push the door, you can uh, see the face of uh, the uh, imaginary owner, yeah, on top of which has been uh, put the face of an imaginary granddaughter that could be you on top of it so that's what was so interesting about walking into the space yeah. it was like you were suddenly in another time another time and into a personal house yeah. and not into a public yeah. place it felt very like you were intruding for yeah. a while until when you push the second door and you go into the, the first ground floor uh, you can hear from the corridor the steps of a man or a lady working, working on the upper floor or a door opening and making some kind of noise. So it brings back again some memories, kind of a Proustian mm. memory of what you have lived in your personal life, what I have lived in personal life in my life with this kind of presence of people working up above your head. It can be in a contemporary building, but it can be as well in, in a old house, mm -hmm. in your family or somewhere else. So bring back this presence of absence in a building that was empty. So you have everything from the smell, the sound, exactly. the floorboard walking up the stairs. So the notion of rare window, mm -hmm. uh, coming from uh, Alfred Hitchcock, from the film movie from 1954, is as well for that. Mm -hmm. Having all your senses open, as you said, the smell, the hear, the eyes, ready to see the perspective of what you will have in front of you. Mm. So you could move on from one room to another one, and the artist is a storyteller uh, in general. He's not just a painter. Many people see him as a painter, but for me he's much mm. more a storyteller. And he's using this, uh, even the character taken from the neon outside in the city, not just to make this neon as we had at the beginning, but to make videos, and those videos are called Neon News. They are not just giving news about Neon, but they, they are like when you do your SMS with your mm. phone. It's taking character one by one outside in the street and recreate a story. And story at a time where many stories are fake news. So he's making fake news about cultural figures, actors, filmmakers, writers, artists, and create, or recreate fake news about imaginary characters. So he's making this as a video or mm. in uh, different rooms here. And it's part of this uh, chapters, there are different chapters, always taking uh, the bedroom back to a bedroom where you have above the bed mm. uh, a window and it looks like as well a, a wall that could come from your house with different collages that are next to each other. And then in the bathroom, you have a wall full of collages. Mm. That is part of his daily practice, where he mix uh, things that he, he has found in going to the West, to Europe or to America, brings back to here and connected with train tickets or things like this. And when there is a figure on top of it, is using this green paper that you use to get rid of your yeah, the, the sweat right and glue it into the face of figures that are in the documents he's taking. It can be a, a, a postcard from a museum in Paris or in New York or in London and he glue traces of his own figure on top of it, like a face a face, a face mm. to face on top of each other. Like gluing two different realities, two different windows on top of each other to create one. Like in his work, when he, takes, he makes these windows, you look through a new perspective in which you have often other elements that are kind of uh, perturbating the 
the only vision, if I look through the window here, I see only one uh, landscape, urban mixed with nature. Here, he had always offered something else, mm. as a contemporary urban uh, thing or another information. So, like what you do when you work on your computer and pop up uh, that you have a new co uh, message or a new WeChat message or a new Instagram thing or whatever, always things come up and pop up. So he's talking about these windows, in this window time where we are always... Uh, uh, There's various streams of things coming at us at all times. Yes, all the time. Lots of stimulants. Permanently yeah. stimulated by other things. Yeah. So we have all those contradictory or paradoxal realities mm -hmm. coming at the same time in front of you already. Creating a new generation of reality where it's uh, plural realities create a new reality all the time. So we are jumping from one information to another one, from one picture to another one. Like you have on Instagram or WeChat, you go one to one, you jump from one information to another one that has nothing to do with each other. That creates the scope of the moment mm -hmm. that you are that's what I found really interesting about the um, reference to Rear Window, the movie. Yeah. Because that's exactly how he saw it. Each, each window, each neighbor's window was like a separate story and a separate interior, exterior. Absolutely, and it's exactly what we have here with Hong Zai because mm. next to this building you have people still living in their house and you see even the clothes hang outside, you hear the noise of the mm. people living in it. So there is this life again. It's, that it's not just a, a digital window, it's a real window as well, bringing life into the mm. place. So it's both those real and digital time brought together. What came first? What, like, w I, I'd be interested to know how the project started. Like, did the reference to Alfred Hitchcock come first? Did you choose the artist first or were you given the space to come? To then find what you the want to do. The story started it. from the Prada Rongzai building. Mm. When I was invited to make a project here, immediately came to my mind and proposed to a Prada Foundation to collaborate with Li Qing because of his relationship to Shanghai, because of his relationship to French concession, because of his relationship between past, present, and future. This triple reality put together. Not in the, because the idea was not to make a romantic project here about mm. the past, saying this was grandiose and it's over and we have all the, these different things in between and, and now, no. The idea was really to bring someone who would bring immediately to the future. Mm. Future of uh, what we live now and tomorrow. Always in his work there is this, uh, this uh, co-presence of different timing. Mm. And especially at a time where we have less and less time and we live faster, we look faster, everything is, we have more emails every day, we have more things to look at, we have more information. We live in a world where every single picture, every single information have a shorter and shorter lifetime. So he's dealing with that and for example, in a series of work he's doing, and we are showing here in one of the rooms, very close to where we are, called Find the Differences. This is coming from uh, the history of a very famous uh, a TV show, but as well in a different uh, drawing, that's two drawings, that we, and there is seven different between the two of them. And why he's bringing this? Because the time to look at work nowadays, if you look how people look at works nowadays, it's shorter and shorter. So with these two paintings, we look the same, it forces you to look at one and look at each other, to, to spend time to understand mm. the differences in between both. So he's trying to not resist to the speed of time, the speed of mutation in which we are now, but bringing kind of a, a slow down mm. on what we are looking at. Yeah, I was just looking at those paintings mm. before. It was quite interesting because it was almost, it felt like a slow motion capture of time. Totally. You know, the, yes. the women's features that you recognize as the same woman, but something is going on that's blurring them out. It's a little bit uh, what this exhibition is about because, uh, again, when we look at things nowadays, we look at things very fast. 
And here, if you really want to experience the project, you need to immerse you in all the different realities and different rooms, even the karaoke room. Mm. Many Westerners ask me, why do we have a karaoke room? And I have to explain them the importance and the cultural importance, I would say, in a, in a karaoke time that people mm. enjoy to go between colleagues, between friends, between families and go and, and celebrate together a time together in a karaoke room and sing songs. And here, in this room, for example, the, the video show kind of ideal world mm. with ideal pictures that are kind of hybrid reality as well with, from different windows. Most of the picture you have in this video that has the kind of a ready-made that the artist took here with the, about this love song are pictures of Europe, uh, Europe mm. mixed with Chinese landscape mm. together, but like it was one thing. So it's all those hybrid realities together as one frame. And this insipidious uh, love song, which is very famous in China that everybody knows here. So we want, he wanted to have this as one room here, as an experience room about these windows put together mm. again, this kind of uh, different frames of windows put together as one landscape. 